Welcome to another SSD update, guys. This is not so much an update of SSDs in general as it is an update of what's going to be going on with SSDs at NCIX. So, if you are familiar with Samsung's 830 series of SSDs, basically, they are among the highest performing SSDs on the market. They are also the only SSD that includes all components designed and built by the actual brand name on the front of it on the market. Yes, everything else, even from major manufacturers like Intel and Crucial, has someone else's stuff in it somewhere. For example, Intel is using Sandforce controllers on their highest end drives these days, and Crucial is using Marvell controllers for their drives. So Intel's using Intel Flash, and, Mar uh, and Crucial's using Micron Flash, which is their parent company, but there are components that they are not responsible for. Samsung is building the Flash, the controller, the firmware, Every aspect of this drive is 100% controlled by them. And the main relevance of all of this is that you can finally buy them at NCIX very soon. Uh, unless you're watching this later, in which case you can already buy them from NCIX. So you can get that Samsung reliability and quality from your friendly neighborhood NCIX, as long as you're in Vancouver or Toronto. Or you can order online if you're in North America, except Mexico. Um, moving right along, let's have a look at the performance. So we've got two of the other top dogs here, the Intel 520, which is about as high performance as it gets for a Sandforce controller, and the Crucial M4, which is a very solidly performing marvell based drive, and Samsung is using their own controller. So this gives us some idea of how these drives are going to compare against each other. However, it should be noted that these two drives are using 256 gig capacity drives, and the Samsung one is a 512 gig, which gives it a smaller advantage. All right, so basically the Samsung falls in between the Intel 520 and the M4, both in terms of pricing and in terms of performance. So it absolutely destroys the M4 in terms of its write performance. However, the reads are fairly similar, even once you get down to very small files. So understand, guys, that the closer you get to the very small file sizes, the more representative that is of the random performance with very small reads and writes that you will encounter oftentimes in an OS environment and the Samsung performs very well here, so does the M4 with the Intel SSD falling a little bit off down in those very small files. However, when it comes to sheer raw throughput for reads and writes, the Intel drive just takes the cake, especially when you get up to these bigger file sizes up past about 64K, where you start seeing 500 to 550 megabytes per second on the reads and writes. Now, underneath here, we've got our Q-depth of 10 results, where pretty much we see, yeah, for the most part, the same thing. So not too worried about, uh, about the differences. We were running at a Q depth of four, which is more of, uh, more of like a storage oriented configuration. And we were also running at a Q depth of 10, which is more like an OS configuration in a heavy workload environment where there's lots of pending items to be processed by the controller. So the more advanced the controller is, the better it'll perform at those deeper Q depths because it'll prioritize things correctly to get it done as efficiently as possible. So that's pretty much it. That's the SSD market update. Pricing has stopped falling so dramatically, so things are leveling off a little bit. So now is as good a time as any to buy an SSD because it remains to be seen uh, when we're going to see another price move. The capacity sweet spot remains the 200 to 256 gig range, or well, 240 to 256 gig. And uh, Big welcome to Samsung coming into the NCIX online store. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more tutorials, videos, showcases, as well as weekly updates on things like SSDs and what's going on at NCIX.